Seems like you guys really like the first list of powerful villains who the Hulk has faced. So guess who's getting treated to a part two? That's right. I'm Adam Andrews with Top 10 Nerd, and this is part two of the top 10 most powerful villains who fought the Hulk. Number 10, By Beast. All right, yes, he looks absolutely ridiculous. I'll admit that. When I think of two-headed monsters, I usually picture two separated heads on one pair of shoulders. But By Beast does one better by putting two heads stacked vertically on one neck. Well played, I, I think. Basically, By Beast is an android created by the now extinct race of bird people, who were a subspecies of inhumans. They created By Beast to have one head with the knowledge of warfare and the other with the knowledge of culture. I figured having a head so cultured he'd be able to avoid most conflicts, but that doesn't seem to be the case. His first appearance was in Incredible Hulk number 169, when Hulk and Harpy visited the avian city of Airy and were captured by By Beast. He makes a fitting villain for Hulk as his strength rivals the Hulk's. He does not get tired and he feels no pain. But like most two-headed antagonists, his heads can't seem to get along, always giving Bruce an edge. Number nine, Wendigo. Wendigo is, and I quote, an indestructible force of nature having been made by the gods. But these are the elder gods of Canadian folklore, so that makes them so much better, eh? The curse of the Wendigo has affected a large group of different people, and essentially happens when a human consumes other human flesh. Ick. Different versions of Wendigo and packs of Wendigo have fought against Wolverine, the Canadian team Alpha Flight, and obviously against the Hulk multiple times. The Wendigo curse turns whoever is infected by it into super strength wielding, nearly indestructible, furry, human consuming monsters. And they are nothing to croak at. Strength capable of lifting at least 75 tons, super speed, stamina that could last several days, durability that could withstand repeated strikes from the Hulk, a healing factor, and immortality as long as they are afflicted by the curse. If it wasn't for the whole consuming people and being a monster, the curse doesn't sound too bad, honestly. Number eight, Absorbing Man. Carl Crusher Creel, a former boxer, became the villain known as Absorbing Man by drinking a potion given to him by the Asgardian trickster, Loki. Carl here has the ability of Omnimorph Duplication, which is essentially the ability to take on properties of anything he touches, living, inanimate, or even forms of energy. Absorbing Man was originally a villain for Thor, but at this point, a ton of Thor's villains are also Hulk villains, so. The Absorbing Man's first fight with Hulk in Incredible Hulk number 125 showed him absorbing Hulk's power before being depowered when Hulk reverted back to Banner. But this was far from their last encounter. And the Absorbing Man has grown and learned how to do more with his power. For an example of how scary this guy can be, look no further than the Immortal Hulk comics in issue 36 specifically. Creel turns into a gamma-powered sandstorm. Number seven. Ironclad. When a team of four scientists tried to replicate the rocket flight that gave the Fantastic Four their powers, they were successful and became the villain team known as the UFOs. They immediately came into conflict with the Incredible Hulk. The bruiser of the team was a guy named Mike Steele, who became the villain Ironclad, gaining a metallic armored skin that gives him superhuman durability capable of resisting Hulk's punches, mass and density manipulation, and superhuman strength that was powerful but nowhere near the same strength as the Hulk, which causes him to resent the Hulk quite a bit. In The Incredible Hulk number 305, Hulk comes into conflict with Ironclad and the UFOs in another dimension. When Hulk and Ironclad ram into each other to start the fight, the force of it reverberates along the pathways leading from the crossroads to an infinite number of dimensions. They shook the multiverse. I am shooketh. Wow, the Hulk is just incredible, isn't he? But you know who else is incredible? That's right, it's you guys. Because of your mere existence, I get to spend my days making videos for you to watch. And the more you like, comment, and subscribe, the more videos we are able to give you. It seems like a pretty fantastic trade-off. Thanks guys. Number six, Fin Fang Foom. He whose limbs shatter mountains and whose back scrapes the sun. Fin Fang Foom is part of a race of shape-shifting aliens from a world called Kakaranthara. 
or the much easier Maklu 4. Foom was the navigator of a spacecraft that landed on Earth in ancient China, and he volunteered to be put in a tomb in a deep slumber to serve as a backup plan for the other Makluans to conquer Earth. Fing Fang Foom looks a lot like a kind of humanized Chinese dragon when he is in his natural form, and is massive. Shape shifting from anywhere between 32 to 255 feet. He has super strength, stamina, durability, and longevity. He has telepathy and flight, spiritual possession, energy assimilation, acid mist, and potential transmogrification abilities. He has fought so many heroes, including the Hulk, multiple times. Specifically though, I want to bring your attention to the Hulk vs. Fin Fang Foom comic, where during the altercation, Hulk threw the massive dragon looking alien to the moon, yelling, just leave! Number five, Abomination. As a longtime adversary of the Hulk, of course the Abomination has to pack a serious punch. Emil Blonsky was a KGB spy at the Gamma base during the Cold War. Wanting to be like the Hulk, he exposed himself to a greater amount of gamma radiation than Bruce Banner. But it didn't exactly go the way he wanted. Emil has a lot of the same abilities as Hulk. Super resistant to damage, can breathe underwater, a healing factor, and can travel huge distances in a single bound. Unfortunately for Hulk though, Abomination is actually twice the base strength of the Hulk, and he retains his intelligence while in the form of Abomination, which he is permanently stuck in. He has a deep hatred for the Hulk, being beaten by him so many times, and has teamed up with many other core Hulk villains, specifically General Ross, to go after the big green Goliath. Abomination first appeared in Tales to Astonish number 90 in 1967, and thanks to Shang-Chi, we know he is still active in the MCU, so let's hope we get to see him return in a much bigger way. Number 4, Red Hulk. General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross has been an obsessed and long time adversary to Bruce Banner, even before he became the Hulk, literally appearing in the very first Hulk comic. When the Hulk emerged, Thaddeus made it his mission to hunt him down. But when his daughter and Bruce Banner's love interest Betty Ross died and Hulk was exiled from Earth, General Ross was both grieving and purposeless until the villains Modok and the leader convinced him to join them to take on the Hulk when he eventually returned. They siphoned off energy and power from the Hulk and gave it to Thaddeus, turning him into the Red Hulk. With almost all the same powers of the Hulk, plus some that are unique to him, Ross is an incredibly powerful character. He has easily killed the Abomination, defeated Odin Force Thor with caveats, obviously, punched the Watcher unconscious, and killed an Elder of the Universe. He can control his transformation to Red Hulk, emits gamma radiation as heat that gets hotter and hotter as he gets angrier and angrier, even becoming an explosion if angry enough. He absorbs energy, usually gamma, but has absorbed and stolen the Silver Surfer's power cosmic, riding off into the distance on his Silver Surfboard. He is an incredibly powerful villain and has gone on to become a hero. Number 3, Arm Chedin. This is the only character on this list I had not heard of before. Let me know if it's the same for you, but Arm Chedin, or Armageddon, is the warlord of the Trojan Empire and is also one of Incredible Hulk's greatest enemies. Armageddon first appears in Incredible Hulk number 413 as the ruler of the Trojan Empire and has incredible superhuman strength and durability. But he differs from most Hulk villains in that strength isn't his main power. No, Armageddon has the ability to channel and release huge amounts of cosmic energy through his body. Armageddon blames Hulk for the death of his son, Trauma, and when he captures Hulk and forces him to power a machine to revive his son, Hulk overdoes it, and the machine instead completely disintegrates Trauma's body. Yikes, dude. Armageddon sort of not really gets his own back in Incredible Hulk's 632 when he poisons Rick Jones and She-Hulk and throws them off of an aircraft high in the sky. They were fine, and it mainly just led to Hulk using the full scale of his World Breaker Hulk power to pummel the Cosmic Warlord almost to death. Number two, Kang the Conqueror, Rama Tut. He who remains, Nathaniel Richards, Kang the Conqueror, a big time Avengers baddie, and our next MCU major villain. Of course, if we're talking about Kang the Conqueror, we're going to be talking about time travel. While these two have done battle while Hulk was in the Avengers, in The Incredible Hulk number 135, Kang kidnaps the Hulk and sends him back to 1917 to take out a guy known as Phantom Eagle who was supposed to destroy a giant German mortar cannon that could take out one of Bruce Banner's own ancestors, 
meaning that the Hulk would cease to be and the Avengers never would have formed. I kind of feel like Kang could probably just do this himself and in more ways than going back to 1917 and destroying a cannon that would destroy an ancestor of the guy who becomes Hulk. But what do I know? I don't know. Instead of taking out Phantom Eagle, the Hulk accidentally takes out the mortar cannon by himself, sending him back to the present and sending Kang to the limbo. A different kind of fight, but a fight nonetheless. Number one, the void. In the comments of the last video, I saw someone comment that Hulk has fought the Sentry. And that is very true. And Sentry is an exceedingly crazy powerful character, but I didn't want to cheat and use a hero for this list like I've done before. Instead, I looked a little deeper. The Sentry, Robert Reynolds, has an interesting trait to his character called the Void. The Void is Robert's internal, eternal nemesis, a destructive embodiment of all Robert's negative aspects that has the power to destroy the world and even potentially the universe. Now, even in the very first appearance of the Void, the Hulk was there, and they did fight a little, but in the Sentry number three, the Void shows up separate from the Sentry and it fights the Hulk and breaks every single bone in his body. It's intense. All right, my little nerd friends, that is the end of part two. What did you think of this list? Did I miss someone else that might make it to part three? Let me know down below. I'm Adam Andrews with Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget you can find my socials and our Facebook presence down below. But until next time, peace out nerds.